I'm going to show you how to make delicious meatballs. So even though I would love to call these traditional meatballs, it won't be fair to some other families. Every family has their own little trick. Every family might have a little extra trick, being whatever region of Italy or whatever grandma decided that, that's traditional to their family. We're going to focus on my tradition, my family's tradition, and we're going to make the meatballs just like that. I'm going to brief you on the ingredients. We have a mixture of meat. I like to mix my meat, so we have pork, veal, and beef. Pork obviously always has a little extra flavor. The veal is very tender, and the beef gives the beef robust of the meatball. We are going to use some eggs, some parmigiano reggiano, some brick oven white bread, uh, the, the crust removed, fresh milk, salt, pepper, and we're gonna have a little, add a little festivity and a little trick today. And in each meatball, we're gonna introduce a little piece of mozzarella. So when you go to eat the meatball, the, the mozzarella is gonna be all nice and gooey from the center of the, the meatball. It's gonna be in there, contained in there. And um, that's it. Then we go to the sauce after this. First thing I wanna do, break up the bread a little bit and let it soak. I'm gonna let it stand here and let it soften. As that happens, I'm gonna start with my meat. Again, my beef. Beef is a little extra than uh, the others. I'll break it down. I'll get some of my pork. Pork is flavorful and tender. You can see the difference of the beef that gives more resistance while the pork is a lot more break apart. My veal, I give it a quick mix. Make my crater. I'm gonna put some parmigiano. Put a little extra. There we go. Now I got my eggs. Remember, we don't want too much because we don't want to taste eggy. It's about one egg per pound, so that enough to bind the meat so they don't fall apart. There we go. It's time for the bread. As you can see, the bread is breaking out. I'm going to get the milk out, break it down like that. This also adds a little flavor because it's soaked with milk, but also adds tenderness. You go to some places that to skimp on the meat, they'll put a lot of bread in there, but then you're having a, a bread bowl instead of a meatball. We don't want that. It's in little flakes, almost white flakes. Yeah, that's with that. We are going to season, not too much salt, because we're going to season also the sauce. So I will go one, two, pepper, one. That's it. I'm ready. This is the fun part. I'll break the egg just like if I was um, making an omelette first. I mix the white and the yolk, you middle that with the bread. And then I, I kind of pinch the meat and I add a little at the time. And then as I'm mixing, like if you're making the dough, once in a while I'll pick up. This is not something you want to do with spoons and be too afraid of touching. You need your hands. 
as long as your hands are clean before and after, everything is fine. See, everything is exactly, wherever you go, it's all the same. And I go, wash my hands. I'm going to sprinkle my pan with a little olive oil. You start with the size, but once you bake this, they're going to be shrinking a little bit because it's going to, uh, some of the fat is going to come out and they're going to shrink by at least one eighth. You'll pinch, you don't want to press, you don't want to compact the meat. You just want to roll it and get a nice golf ball like that. At this point, I'll put an indent like that. Get one of the, the cheese that we prepared in advance. I'll put it in the middle and as I press, I roll around and close the meatball again. A little thing here, a little roll, and there you have it. Voila. After a while you start doing this, you're gonna be able to make them all the same size. All right, we are ready to go to the oven. I'm gonna sprinkle a little, just a little bit of olive oil on top to get the whole process started. I got my hot oven in 350, it's already pre-warmed. Put them in and bye-bye for now to the sauce. Now that the meatballs are in the oven, we go ahead and prepare our sauce. It's going to be, in this case, a simple tomato garlic basil sauce because we want to taste the meat, we want to taste the cheese, we don't want to, our palate to wander off to other things. So what do we do here? Sprinkle some nice good olive oil, always get the best and use less instead of get not a good olive oil and have to use tons of it. So I'm going to have a medium high heat. I'm going to put two tablespoons of oil and three cloves of garlic which are smushed so they broke in a half but it's, it's three pieces. I put them in there. We don't want any spices, anything. People can always add on the plate if they want to. I'm waiting until the garlic gets a little bit of toasty, not burned, but toasty. Now, the garlic is cooking. I'm gonna take three of these jars in my case. If you just had to have a, a dish for three or four, one will be enough. Do not advise to use tomato in can because uh, you will always will have the metal taste, something left by the, the tin. So now, be careful. As this cooks, I'll plan what else is coming with this meal today. I prepared some sauté eggplant. The meatballs go on the side as a main course. So to, to add a nice touch, after I have the pasta in the sauce, I'm gonna sprinkle some of this egg, crunchy eggplant on top with uh, chiffon basil, little basil leaves. And uh, believe me, I don't think I need to add much. Now, I'm just gonna let this go for about 40 minutes. So the tomato starts, the water starts evaporating, concentrate, the flavor concentrate. And remember, we still wanna cook a little more once we add the meatballs. So let's, I see you in about a half an hour. So as I start cooking the sauce, I want to check my meatballs so they don't overcook. 
I'm gonna go down, grab one for taste. Let's stay nice and brown as you can see. I, I'll push on it and see how, how much does it give back. You see, it's really, it's almost cooked, but not all the way, so it's perfect. I give it a cut, you can see the gooey mozzarella in the middle, and a little bit on the pink side, this is done. So we turn the oven off, let it rest, once we start on the, on the sauce. Here are our meatballs. We have our beautiful sauce here. And we're gonna put our meatballs right in there. And the good thing, once you get so elaborated in making these meatballs, you make some extra, you make little containers, and you freeze it. You come home, crazy day, you get one of those containers, put it in a, in a warm water bath, Go take your shower, go do things, boil your water, make your pasta, put them, toss them all together, a little cheese on top, and, and you got your dinner all ready. It looks like you slaved all day. We're just going to leave the meatballs in the sauce long enough to finish the cooking inside, about 10, 15 minutes, while the pasta boil. And the whole dish should be, at that time, completed. In this country, USA, there is a, a, a little bit of a misunderstanding that we eat the big thing of pasta with a big blob of sauce and meatballs right smacked on it. We don't do that. We do cook the meatballs in the sauce, but then the meatballs are removed we're using the sauce to flavor the pasta, so that's usually the way it works. Even uh, if you put ribs in the sauce, it would be always like that. The meat comes after and not all mixed all at once. Non più dry farfalon amoroso, notte giorno di torno girato. Thanks for watching, and until next time, buon appetito. Va bene? Delle belle interpando e riposo, ma ci sei tuo cibo d'amore.